This is the homework for 8, 127, 132, and 134 A and C. For problem 127, I need to complete the table. Well, in red were the missing values. And I found that by creating a rule. There are several ways that you could find these missing values, but I'm just using a rule. And I first started out by finding the slope or rate of change. And it's the difference of the y's over the difference of the x's. And the y's from 4 to 2, and I can choose any two values. I'm choosing from, from 4 to 2, I'm subtracting 2. And from 3 to 0, I'm subtracting 3. So my slope or rate of change is negative 2 over negative 3, or which simplifies a negative divided by a negative is a positive 2 thirds. Here I show the slope formula, the difference of the y's, and that's what we did. And I can choose any two values. I could um, take the difference of these two over these two, and it'll all simplify to two thirds. 6 minus 2 is 4. 6 minus 0 is 6. And 4, 6 simplifies to 2 thirds. So now that I have the slope, I can go ahead and find the rule, wh which is, or the equation, y equals mx plus b, slope intercept form. Well, we found the slope, the m, which is 2 thirds. And the b is the y-intercept, or when x equals 0. So when x equals 0, y is 2. So I found here the rule or the equation. I can use that rule to find any of these missing values. So if I'm missing, um, I was missing this value here, and if I know that x equals 6, I can substitute x with the value of 6, because that's what I'm saying x equals. So if x equals 6, now I plug it into the equation. Now that I have 6 for the value of x, and that's what we got from the, the table, x equals 6, 2 thirds of 6 is 4. And I can do that by 6 divided by 3 is 2, 2 multiplied by 2 is 4, and 4 plus 2 is 6. So I get the missing value. And I can do that for all of the missing y values. I just plug in if x equals negative 6. Instead of 6 here, I'd put negative 6 and solve for y. For the missing x value, I know that y equals negative 4. So in, when I have slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, I have the y value, which is negative 4, that was given, and now I'm going to have to solve for x. And then I do a series of inverse um, operations. I subtract 2 from both sides, 0 pair. Negative 4 and negative 2 is negative 6. Now I want to use the fraction buster method to eliminate this denominator, this 3. 3 times 3, I mean 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 multiplied by 2 is 2. And 3 multiplied by negative 6 is negative 18. Inverse property multiplication is division. I divide both sides by 2. Negative 18 divided by 2 is negative 9, so x equals negative 9 and I found it. Part C is asking, is this an example of linear or nonlinear growth? And this is an example of linear growth because it has a constant rate of change, which was two-thirds. For problem 132, a candy store's specialty is taffy. Customers can fill a bag with taffy and the price is based on how much the candy weighs. 
the store charges $2 for 10 ounces of taffy. So you have the amount of taffy is the dependent and the independent is the price. So we have 10 ounces cost $2. So we want to find the unit rate. One ounce would cost how much? And we cross multiply. We cross multiply. 10 multiplied by x is 10x. 2 multiplied by 1 is 2. Divide both sides by 10, and x equals 2 tenths, or 20 hundredths, which equals 20 cents. So we know that 1 ounce of taffy costs 20 cents. Well, knowing that 1 ounce of taffy costs 20 cents, then we could fill this in because it would be 2 times. 20 cents, and 5 times 20 cents, 12 times 20 cents, and 15, 15 times 20 cents. Finding the unit rate will allow us to find these missing values. The other way is by finding the slope or rate of change, which when we do it, the rate of change, the difference of the y's, the difference of the y's, for 2 minus 4 and 10 minus 20, we still end up getting 20 cents. So now that we know it's 20 cents per ounce, 2 ounces is 40 cents, 5 times 20 cents is $1, and so forth. Part B, we need to graph the values in the table. So we have the dependent, the price depends on how much taffy you're buying. And so here, hmm. two ounces cost 40 cents. And we know that it's a constant rate of change, so it has to be linear because it's a constant rate. For every ounce that you buy is 20 cents, so it's going up at a constant rate. And we know it's proportional because zero ounces of taffy is going to cost zero dollars. So remember, proportional is that it's linear and it starts at the origin. For problem 134, we need to compute each product or quotient and convert the final answer to scientific notation. When you're multiplying in scientific notation, you do not have to have the powers of 10 have the same exponents. That's only when you're adding or subtracting. So we're going to multiply the coefficients, 2 multiplied by 3 and 2 tenths, and then now the powers, 10 squared multiplied by 10 to the negative fifth. Now we multiply this, 2 multiplied by th 3 and 2 tenths is 6 and 4 tenths. And when you're multiplying integer exponents with the same base, you keep the base and you add the two exponents. So this is 2 plus a negative 5 or 2 minus 5. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. When dividing in scientific notation, you divide the coefficients, 2 and 5 tenths divided by 5, so 2 and 5 tenths divided by 5. And when you divide powers of 10 with the same base, so our 10, the base is 10, you subtract the exponents. So I always like to remind myself that treat this fraction bar like a subtraction sign. 5 minus a positive 8. 5 minus a positive 8. And I have more negatives, so I know the exponent's going to be negative. Signs are opposite, so I subtract. 8 minus 5 is 3, so it's negative.
So this is not in scientific notation. Remember that the coefficient has to be greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. And 5 tenths is less than 1. So in order to um, put this in scientific notation, we need to increase the value of this coefficient and by multiplying it by 10. So this is increasing by one place value, which gives us five. And if this increases by one, this has to decrease by one. So we have to subtract one from here. So we have multiplied by 10 and negative 3 and negative 1 is negative 4. So our final answer is 5 times 10 to the negative 4th.